appointment fairly regularly and um, it is just a wee bit much. Okay. All right. Well, Teresa, thanks very much for okay. joining us on the programme today. Folks, 712 uh, Keep those calls coming through about that issue today. As I say, we're going to look into it and see what we can uh, find out and get back to you on it. But from what Teresa says, it sounds like uh, it's actually quite complicated as well. Uh, so uh, 712 is the number. Now, the story of real estate man, a salesman in uh, Chicago who are desperate to make sales is the basis for Glengarry Glen Ross, which is in the Playhouse tomorrow night. Originally written by David Mamet, it was uh, a stage play initially and and uh, then a film with Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon and Ed Harris. Michal McDade uh, joins me. He, uh, you're directing the Playhouse version. Now, this is the story of Desperate Men. What is the appeal behind this film? Uh, really, I mean, it's just to do their best to try and get as much money as they can. Uh, basically, just survival, really. But uh, in the real estate industry and in the sales game, really, it's, it's so competitive. It's so tough. So cutthroat. Mm. So, yeah, pretty much. So, I mean in order to be the best and be the top of your game, you've got to fight off so much competition. And that's what these guys are faced with in everyday life. So why do you think people love this play in this film? I think it's just because it's it's so in your face. It's, I mean, in terms of profanity, in terms of mm. bad language, it's very out there. It's just very in your face. And David Mamet, who wrote it, he, he just doesn't hold back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, there's also elements of uh, black humour in it too, yeah. which I, I think are very appealing to. Um, but I mean, there's so many characters on it who are on different levels. I mean, you have one character who's very, very confident, very cocky in what he does. You'd have another character who's very weak at what he does, very kind of low in confidence. Then you would have people who are desperate, people who just don't care. You know, so there's so many characters to relate to there as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's interesting to just kind of throw all those emotions on there and just see what the outcome is, really. And language is such a big thing to do with it. You mentioned, of course, there's a lot of bad language, yeah. in it, but there's also, it, it's really coming at you thick and fast uh, the whole way through, isn't it? And uh, it's, there's so many great quotes that come out of uh, Glenn, Gary, Glenn Ross. Mm. There's the ABC one. Uh, remind us of that one. It's ABC, always be closing, which is what the salesmen are told to do. It's kind of always be closing your deals, always be closing your sales, mm -hmm. never stop, always be making money. That's pretty much what it means. Um, but yeah, yeah, in terms of bad language, I mean, it's it's very out there, it's very in your face, as I say, and, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it, the, the pace of the dialogue is just mm. constant, it doesn't stop. So it, it's one of these pieces that, you know, you, you have to follow from the outset and pay attention to, to get the story. Did you go to the film or did you go to the play for your source? Um, well, I was actually in a production of it six years ago, and... That was with uh, one of my cast members, Colin Heron, who directed that, and he's now playing Shelley Levine in this version. And uh, I'd never heard of it before then, and I just got a part on it, and from there I just fell in love with the piece. I just thought it was a fantastic piece of theatre, and then I seen the film and did research on it, and there was just so many different versions of it, and, you know, just... Uh, it's a play that's been performed so many times worldwide, mm. even even in uh, the likes of countries like China, mm. there have been versions done. So, I mean... It's very popular, and to do research and take all those ideas and take all those different versions, you know. But I, I think the one version that most people go for is the film version with the likes of Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon, Ed Harris. I mean, you've got top actors there who really did, in a way, make the performances their own. Um, so in order to try and play the characters differently, it is a real challenge, you know. Okay, try, well, and try and give a different kind of approach on it. Sure. Well, we're, we're also joined here today by Aaron McClelland, who plays Dave Moss, and Jeff Cook, who plays uh, George Aaron. Oh, now, before I ask you a wee bit about it, guys, maybe you could give us a short excerpt, uh, maybe a clean radio edit version <laughs> yeah. of it. And before I do, can I just get the context of this scene that we're going to hear? This is um, a, a scene um, between Dave Moss and, and George Aaron. Um, they're sitting in a Chinese restaurant. Um, they, they've had the always be closing speech thrown in their face. Um, they're not too happy. Um, they're just talking about their, their general ills at their place of work. And um, finally, Dave Moss comes up with uh, a plan. OK, so when you're ready, take it away. Polacks and deadbeats. Polacks. Deadbeats all. They, uh, they hold on to their money. All of them. Hey, hey. It happens to us all. Where am I going to work? You have to cheer up, George. You want out yet. I'm not. You missed a sale. Big deal. A dead big Pollock, big deal. How are you going to sell them in the first place? Your mistake. You shouldn't have taken the lead. How are you going to sell them in the first to. place? You had Your to. Your mistake. Yeah, why? To, to, get on the, the to get on the lead. To get on the board. 
You had to, yeah. yeah. Why? How are you going to get the board selling a pallet? To get on the board. You know, the pressure is just too great. You know, the pressure is just too great. And you're absolutely... They're too important. All of them. You go in the door, I got to close. Or I don't eat lunch. Or I don't win the Cadillac. We work too hard. You work too hard. All of you got... You got to get on this ball. I... I... Some I, contest ball. I... It's not right. It's not. No. And it's not right to the customers. I know it's not. For some sales, sales promotion. promotion. You lose, then we fire. No. It's medieval. It's wrong. Are we going to fire? No. It's wrong. Yeah. Yes, it is. And you know who's responsible? Who? You know who it is. It's Mitch and Murray. Because it doesn't have to be this way. No. And you know what the hard part is? What? Just the act. What act? To say, I'm going on my own. Because what you do, George, let me tell you what you do. You find yourself and throw to someone else, and we can save ourselves to please, to win some toaster too. To... And the guy who got there first made up those... That's right. He made up those rules, and we're working for him. That's the truth. That's the God's truth. And it gets me depressed. I swear it does. At my age, to see someone wins a catalog this month, P.S., two guys get fired. <sighs> You don't ask your sales force. No. And I want to tell you what somebody should do. What? Someone should stand up and strike back. What do you mean? Somebody. Yeah? Should do something to them. What? Something to pay them back. Someone... Someone should hurt them. Murray and Mitch. Someone should hurt them? Yeah. How? Huh? Do something to hurt them. Will they live? What? Someone... Someone should rob the office. With an excerpt from uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, that was uh, that was actors uh, 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 Aaron McClelland, and uh, we also had Jeff Coke there as well. Guys, just tell us a wee bit about the characters. You told us about the scene. Um, Aaron, tell us about your character. Yeah, Dave Moss. He's kind of an outspoken guy. He's he's very you know got a big mouth on him. He's very in your face. He's been in the business a long time, and. He's starting to lose the head. Hmm. All these young hot shots going yeah. on now. Starting to lose the head, and he's definitely he's just because he's so big mouth. He's such a confident guy, and because all these other guys are coming in, trying to close deals and stuff, and he's it's coming to a point where he's just you know I'm fed up with this, you know, and it, it goes it's crazy. <laughs> he's a man at the top of his game, and all the yeah. young hot shots are coming and basically taking all the sales and taking all the money and Absolutely. he just he just can't handle that because he's, he's he's the top man he should be the one who's closing all the he's time he's top dog Jeff is there a temptation to go to the film and you know take the performance from the film that's so iconic N not for me I, I, I tend to consciously avoid that anyway um, in the case of Glengarry Glen Ross I saw it many many years ago and, and the standout performance in the movie is, is Jack Lemmon um which you really can't eradicate from your mind. The other part's less so, so because it's probably the better part of 20 years since I've seen it, um, when we came to do this, then it was just a case of making sure I didn't watch it again. Mm. Um, and, and basically, I can just come and make George my own character. Okay. Michal, what are the details for tomorrow night? It's uh, tomorrow night at the Playhouse Theatre, uh, 8 o'clock sharp. Okay. Well, guys, thanks so much for coming in. And, uh, it sounds great. Uh, wonderful uh, play. And uh, I'm really must, I've never seen the film. Must uh, make a point of actually seeing the film. But the play sounds fantastic tomorrow night, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. 712 is the number if you want to get through to the programme this afternoon. Now, the big sports story of the day is, of course, 